So we are going to discuss about linear transformations in this video. Let's get started. Consider a set of standard 3D vector space that is R3 of course with basis vectors, the standard basis vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. All right. We have understood that a matrix contains information about the basis vectors, right? So you have a matrix in front of you. The first column of this matrix represents the ith basis vectors. The second column represents the j basis vector. And the third column represents the k basis vector, right? So this is what we have understood up till now in the previous videos and in this video. This is before transformation. This matrix represents the location or you can call the coordinates of the basis vectors before transformation. Now let us rotate the basis vectors i and j by 90 degree counterclockwise like we did in the last video. So this is what we will get if we rotate the basis vectors i and j counterclockwise. This is what we are going to get. And this is the matrix representing this transformation or the location of the basis vectors in this scenario. So the first column represents the ith basis vectors, the second column represents the j basis vectors, and the third column represents the k basis vector. And this is after transformation. So now we have put both of these scenarios side by side. One is before transformation and one is after transformation. However, there are some clauses this transformation must comply in order to call this transformation a linear transformation. So what are those clauses? Clause number one or the requirement number one is that lines must remain lines. That is lines whether they are grid lines or the basis vectors must remain line shaped. So as of now, this one is right. You know, the lines are lines in both of the scenarios. Before transformation and after transformation, lines are lines. However, this is wrong because the y-axis has, has become sort of an arc. So this is not acceptable for a linear transformation to happen. And this one is indeed wrong. Requirement number two, origin must remain the same. So what we did earlier was correct, right? We never changed the origin. So this one is right. However, if you shift the origin from its actual location to somewhere else, that one would be wrong. So the requirement number two is origins must remain the same. And the requirement number three is that grid lines must remain parallel and equidistant, right? So the grid lines cannot intersect with each other at any point in time and they must be equidistant. So for example, the distance from 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 should always be constant. So this one, the transformation we did was absolutely correct. However, if you change the grid distance between the grids and it is not the same, then the requirement number 3 will not comply and that transformation will not be a linear transformation. So, this on the left hand side, this is the matrix representing the location or the coordinates of the basis vectors before transformation, and this one is the matrix representing the coordinates of basis vectors after transformation. And what was the transformation? We just rotated the xy plane. 90 degree counterclockwise here, right? Not here, not this one. When we rotated the xy plane 90 degree counterclockwise, we reached this position. This is the graphical representation and this is the mathematical representation. All right, excuse me. All right, so if any transformation complies with these three requirements, that would be a linear transformation. I hope you understand the concept. Like, share and subscribe. Love you 3000.